Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the Contacts service that's built into OS X Server. Now, Contacts is a service that's built into Server that allows you to manage all of your different contact information. Uh, for those of you that have used a Mac for a while, you know that uh, Apple has a uh, Contacts application uh, that you can use across all of your Mac and iOS devices. Uh, as well as iCloud to keep your contacts in sync. Now there might be a time where you don't want your contacts on the internet. Uh, you may want to have those contacts be private uh, because you don't want them in the cloud or anywhere else. And so in those cases you might want to have your own contact server so that that way you can guarantee that everything is safe and is only on your server and then on your devices. And so that's where this contact service would come into play with OS X Server. Uh, if you use iCloud and you're happy with the service there and how your contacts goes, you probably wouldn't need to use this service at all. Uh, but I thought I'd show you a few things on it just so that you get a good idea for how this would work, uh, especially, like I said, if you want to keep those contacts private. Now, one of the things here about the contact service, as you can see here, it's a pretty simple service. Uh, there's not a lot of different things that need to be done, uh, particularly with it in terms of setup. Um, we've got our typical status here. You can see the status is off, so we don't have the service running. Uh, again, just like all of the other uh, services, we can edit the permissions the same as we can uh, in the other services, whether we want all or some of the users and what networks we want uh, this particular uh, server to work on. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to leave it alone, uh, but you can specify that if you want to. Now, one of the things you notice here uh, in the service is push notifications. Uh, the nice thing about OS X Server is they do have push notifications built in for some of these services. So that as opposed to uh, having to fetch the data, the data automatically gets pushed to your devices. So what does that mean? So for instance, uh, if I have um, mail, for instance, um, and my mail comes in, you, if you have push notifications set up on your phone, which is usually the default, those mail messages will come in automatically and let you know that they're there. Uh, if you don't have push notifications set up, the mail will only check the server to see if you have new mail every time you go into the application or you refresh the application so it'll find the information. The same is true here with the contact server. That way, any changes you make will automatically be pushed to all of your devices instead of you having to refresh it to see what changes have taken place. So in our case here, it says disabled. I'm going to go ahead and enable push notifications. And so it says it's disabled. Do you want to do this so that you can sync your contacts over the internet? And so I'm going to say yes, I want to do that. And again, when it says over the internet, it basically just means that uh, you're going to be um, you know, having those devices sync over the air uh, with this particular setup. Okay, so now the push notification shows enabled. Uh, if we ever needed to edit this, you want to see how that works, we would click on Edit Notification. And you can see here, um, it's got to have an Apple ID for those push notifications, shows when it expires. You see I have nothing here right now. And so I can either change it or renew uh, the push notification. And so if I just click on change, uh, again, if I change my uh, Apple ID, it's going to disrupt the users. I'm going to cancel that. Instead, I'm going to renew a certificate here. And just in here, you'll put in your Apple ID and your password. So let me go ahead and put that information in right now. Okay, now once I have that information in there, I click renew certificate. Now the reason I'm doing this is I've had a certificate before. So rather than create a new one, I'm going to hit renew. So we'll just say renew. And it's going to renew that certificate for me. And there we go. So now it's renewed. The certificate's ready to go. You can see I've got it um, set until 2017. And I'm all set and I'm done. Now if I wanted to manage my certificates, I would just uh, click this little link here. And it would take me to Apple's website. In fact, I've got that right here. Let me just show you what it looks like. It would take you to the Apple Push Certificates portal where you would log in with your information and you could manage your certificates here. In fact, let me just go ahead and put that information in. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, once I have that information in there, I click on Sign In. And it takes me here and it shows me all the different certificates that I've got, when I had them, when they expired, and all of that information. You can see here I've had some of these uh, before uh, with this Apple ID. Some have been uh, expired in the past. I can always revoke those certificates in here if I wanted to do that. Um, and, uh, and go from there. You can see these two are expired and this is the one that's active right here. So it just gives you a little history and a way to manage those, uh, those certificates that you've got. So let's go ahead and go back into server here. 
Okay, so now that I've got the certificates all set up, I just say done and everything is set and ready to go. Now, another place you can enable uh, push notifications is up here in the server tab. I just want to show you that uh, quickly here. If you go into settings, you can enable push notifications from right here, and this would do it uh, across the board uh, for all of your different uh, services that need those push notifications. If they're enabled here, they'll be enabled for those services. So I just want to show you that there's another location for that as well. Let's go ahead and go back uh, into the Contacts app here. Uh, one more setting that I've got is uh, the searching area here, and that's the ability to allow users to search the directory uh, using the Contacts application. Now, when we refer to the directory uh, for, th for the purposes of server, what it means is it means any users that are in your user accounts here. So that I'd be able to do a search inside the Contacts application to find users' information in here so that then I can use that information to contact any users I have on the server. So if you wanted those uh, users available for that search, you would check this box. If for some reason you wouldn't want people searching your directory, maybe you want to keep the users private, then you would not check that box. Uh, in our case, I'm just going to go ahead and check it uh, because I do want to show you how the search works. And in most cases, uh, that's probably what you're going to want to do anyway because it's not going to cause that much problem. Uh, like I said, unless you've got, got a situation where you want your users to be private. So now that I've got everything set up and ready to go, I just go ahead and throw the switch here to start the service. And like all of our services, it just uh, reminds us that, uh, that we have the airport base station connected. Uh, if you do not have a base station connected, you won't get this message. But since we do, it's just saying, hey, uh, do you want to allow um, Internet access for these contacts or just on your local network? Or in our, well, in our case, I do want to allow that. So I'm going to say allow, and it's going to automatically open the ports for me. So if I just hit allow here, you can see that it is starting the service. And you can see it's saying it's available on my local network. Now what will happen is, is it'll start off this way. Eventually it will change to my public uh, IP address. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time for it to do that uh, particular update. So give it a little bit of time and it'll change. Uh, I just want to show you two here on the office uh, router here. On my router you can see it's added contacts uh, in there. And so that's all set and ready to go. And I just wanted to show you that it does automatically do that. So let's go back into contacts. Okay, now that we've got a green light and everything's set up and ready to go, let me uh, show you what it looks like to set up uh, the contact service on a uh, separate device. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go over to my other computer and show you how that setup works. Okay, so here I am over on a screen share. And so this is a screen share of another uh, Mac that I've got. And you can see here, this is uh, the Contacts application. I've pulled that up. And you can see right now I just have the Contacts on my Mac and then basic uh, directory uh, services. So how do we add our server then to this Contacts list? Now there's a couple of ways to do that. Uh, the first way would be to use System Preferences. Let me just pull that up right here. And inside System Preferences here, uh, you can actually go and add uh, an account here. You just click this plus button right here. And you're going to scroll down to where it says Add Other Account. And then right here you have the options of adding either a specific CalDAV account uh, or CardDAV account. Okay, that's how you'd add contacts. You can add them individually or you can add an OS X server account. Let's go ahead and just click on that. Uh, you can see as soon as I click on that, you see that it has, it has found my server right here, or you can do it to another server. Let's say you're off-site and you want to add it from there, uh, and you're logged in, you can do that that way. But for right here, we're going to just go ahead and click on Server and say Next. And then in here, we put in the username and the password. And so let me just put that in. And once you've got that information in there, you just click on Sign In. And then it asks what services or apps you want to use with this account. And you notice that it will automatically set VPN up for you as well uh, through this method. So all of the different services that you may have running on your server, it's going to find those and can automatically set them up for you. Uh, in this case, since I've already set up VPN, I showed you how to do that in a previous screencast. I'm going to uncheck this one and just set up the uh, contacts. So we're going to say Done. And so now you can see I've got an OS X server account now that says contacts and you can see I've got that all set and ready to go I've got my details here get rid of that here and so here we are now back in on um, our contacts application you notice here now I've got an OS 10 server account right here and I can say all server accounts you notice I don't have anything on the server right now that's why nothing's showing up uh, but as I add contacts I can add contacts in here just like I normally would and those would be a part of my OS 10 server contacts um, uh, setup right here 
Uh, you'll also notice down here I've got OS 10 uh, directory. Notice there's nothing in there. Uh, but that allows me to do the search. If you remember, we enabled the search. So if I just put in, um, you know, for instance, um, I think I had John Doe. And see, there's John Doe. He's on the server. And you can see that he comes up uh, through that search. And so that's what that directory search does for you, is it allows you to search for users that were added to the contact server itself. OK, so that gives you an idea of how to set that up. Again, it's a simple way to set up your contacts, calendars, and all of that. I'll show you how to do it manually uh, as well in uh, the next screencast that I do on calendars. But I just wanted to show you how that works uh, using the uh, system preferences method. Now what I want to do is I want to show you um, how to actually set up a server account that allows you to share it with all of your users. So if you've got uh, users in a household or in a work group and everybody wants to pool the same contacts uh, database, how do you set that up? Okay, here we are back over on the server application. And like we said before, if you wanted to have a setup where everybody shared the same contacts database, instead of each user having their own separate contacts list, uh, you can do that by creating a shared user here in, uh, in server. So you just come over here to the user accounts. And what we're going to do is create a, a local network user. We're just going to click the plus button here. And you want to make sure it's the local network directory, not just the local directory. Okay, And we're going to create an account. And so I might just call it, let's say, Shared Contacts. OK, and so there's the account name. Uh, we don't need any email addresses for it. Uh, you want to go ahead and create a password for it. So let me just make up a password here. And then you verify it. All right, now that I've got that all set up, uh, when you say home folder, whether you want it local or not, on this case, I'm just going to say none services only because I really don't want a home folder set up. And so I've got everything I need here now. I'm ready to go. And I would just say create. And what it's going to do is create this uh, new local network user called shared contacts. And once that's done, then what you're going to do is when you go over to your uh, different uh, accounts on your different devices, you would then log in with this shared contacts account and that would then serve uh, as the account you would use to share all those contacts. So as this is loading, uh, that gives you an idea of how that works. Uh, there you go. You see there's my shared contacts information right there. Let me just go back into the contacts app here. Uh, so that gives you an idea of how the contact service works. Like I said, it's a pretty simple service, uh, but it does allow you to manage all your contacts yourself on your own server instead of having it anywhere else in the cloud. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.